We will now start the women's basketball portion of Media Day. We are starting with Jemani Ingram, Asia Innes, Elena Pernicic, and Emily Carver. And we will open it up for questions. David Rogers, High Country Sports. Well, Emily, let's start with you since you're one of the top returning returning people. Um, tell me how, how about you feel about this team and, and your new your new teammates? Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, for my last year, we're really excited to have a fresh start, fresh coaching staff, a lot of new players, and I feel like we're connecting really well on and off the court. So we're just super excited to see how all this is going to translate throughout the season. Uh, Zach Smith, High Country Sports. Emily, coming in, you were named to uh, the one of the preseason All Sun Belt teams. Uh, talk about what that means to you and uh, what what you're planning on bringing this season. Yeah, I mean it's a really great honor, but it really is about what you do during the season. So like postseason awards are a, a bigger honor. So I'm I'm excited to get it, but I'm excited to also push through the season and see what I can do throughout the season and do for my team and just see what we can accomplish together. Because I feel like this team is really going to go further than we really ever have in the past. Uh, you're coming in with a new coach this year, um, some new faces. Uh, what, how, how have things been going on the off season? Like, how is the team working together? Anybody? Sorry. Uh, I think we took the time to build chemistry and just get to know one another on and off the court. So that's building our chemistry even better on the court. So very excited for us to come for all of us. Bob Dillner, Appalachian Weekly News, App TV. I know a few of you from calling the games last year, and uh, some of you I hope, hope to get to know. But I, I want to know, in talking to Coach and talking to a couple of players, um, uh, App State Women's Program is going to be a little different this year. It's a little different style of play. How would you characterize what Coach Alora is bringing to this program, especially Jamani and, and you, Emily? You know, how is it different than than last year? Um, I would just say we have a whole new energy about us. We, like I said, this fresh start, it's a really good feeling for a lot of us. We have nine seniors, so it's a lot of our last year. We really want to go out with a really good finish, and I feel like we're all like pushing to have that really good finish, and I feel like Coach Sharp is right there behind us, backing us up in every decision and supporting us the whole way. Jamani? Uh, yeah, just to piggyback off that, I would say definitely high energy, but poise. Um, very excited. She brings a lot of energy, so it trickles down into all the players. And then in terms of, you know, you know, what style of play it is, you know, just for the others as well, you know, what type of play do you see this team, you know, engaging with on the court this year? Playing together, I think that's our main focus. Playing for one another um, is going to take us far this year. I think just like they said, building chemistry on and off the court. Coach is a great coach. It's one of the reasons why I chose here. So just playing for one another. Elena, talk about your decision to come here. Uh, obviously, some history and so forth. But you know, what do you think about coming to App, what you've seen in practice, and what you've seen, especially even through the, the community, through a difficult time? When, when I was on my visit and like I met with Coach Sharp and her staff, I just felt the energy and I just felt like this is something where I want to be. Like I always wanted to play D1 basketball and she just like offered me everything that I wanted. Like this is a big family on and off the court and that's like I think that's going to be like a big change for all of us. You know, Jamani, you were an important part of this offense last year. Um, you know, what do you see is different this year? You know, as we enter play, you know, compared to where, you know, you were playing last year and what have you done to propel your game? Um, honestly, just be the best team that I can be. Um, we have a lot of pieces this year, so I'm excited for that. A lot of people come off the bench, uh, starting the game, whatever it may be. So just being the best version I can offensively and defensively and just that leader that everybody needs me to be. Zach Colburn, we're talking Democrat. Emily, I asked the same question to Caden back during the fall, but you know, you being a Western North Carolina, you know, product. Um, when this hurt, when the hurricane hit, you know, what were your first thoughts with, with everything? Yeah, I mean, it was really hard on me because we obviously got hit pretty hard here, but my family is from Asheville, and not being able to communicate with them for three and four days was hard, but I think just us as a team being able to get out into the community and see what we can do to help others and really give back to the community that's given so much to us, it really, really meant a lot to me. Question first for the two newcomers, just 
what light can you shed on the recruiting process and kind of the early communication with Coach Sharp and what you learned about this program before you arrived? Yeah, I think being in college basketball for going on five years, genuine people is what you know, what I came here for, what I've been looking for my whole college career. And that's exactly what these people are. People around me, the coaching staff, um, I think they did a great job recruiting, just being real and keeping that going. You know, we're three, four months in and I still feel that same connection. For me, it's just like being far away from home and like Coach Harp and the whole team are always like behind my back, having my back. And I just feel that it's like the most important part for me since like, I'm really far away from home. <laughs> what is that like for you? You know, obviously, it, I'm sure it's a challenge being away from your, you know, family back home. But building the relationships that you have so far here, I really love it here. Like every single day, I can expect something new from all of us. I think we are all really like good friends, on and off the court. And I just think that like our chemistry is really like nice, and it feels like really nice being here. Emily, each year is a slightly different team, no matter if there's a coaching change, a few newcomers, more than a few. What makes this year's team unique? Um, I agree with what everybody has been saying, just the overall chemistry of the team. I think sometimes you can run into like teams liking certain people, this and that. Like this team, we're very connected, and I feel like every time we step on the court, we feel more connected, and you can see that every time we step out there, and I think that's just gonna continue to get better as the season goes on and lead to a lot of wins for this program. Any further questions? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Up next, we've got head coach Alora Sharp entering her first season at App State. Coach will open with an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Great. Thank you, Kat. Also, thank you, everybody, for being here. What an awesome crowd. And uh, I've had a pretty amazing last several months and really excited to be here today. I want to start by just thanking everyone who reached out to our team in the midst of a crazy last few weeks in the in the middle of the hurricane. And we had so many people reach out about our team. And, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to be at App State, because of the family, the camaraderie of the black and gold. And I'm so proud proud to lead this great women's basketball program. Um, I'm excited about our team. I know a lot of people love their team this time of year, but uh, I thought that our staff did a really good job putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And everyone always says, man, you know, you only returned five players, but I, I like to make, the, make that the advantage. We got to go in the portal and in junior college and high school and really research and find what players fit, how we want to play. And I think in this first year we're going to be able to play pretty close to the style of play that I would like to make the face of this program um, you know obviously you just had the chance to meet some of the players in our program and hopefully you could take away really really quickly uh, the the high character of the young women that are going to represent our program so I'm really pleased with their work ethic I'm probably most pleased just with their coachability especially the returners you know they did not sign up to play for me you know the 10 players that signed for me they signed up and looked me in the eye and said yes I want to come play for you the returners it's a little bit different but they have signed up to play for me every day in the way that they have um, bought in the way that they have worked the way that they have led and I've had a lot of fun coaching them and and leading them and and two of them Zeta Porter and and Emily Carver I actually recruited before so I had previous relationships with them I finally get to coach them and that's really exciting but um, you know we're starting to have some separation in our roster there's still a lot of unknowns for us as far as starting lineups I do think we have a lot of weapons I, I finished you know we had a scrimmage this weekend and I told them in the locker room in our film session yesterday we've got a lot of weapons we should use them you can really see our team to move the basketball play inside out we want to play good to great offense we want to turn down good shots hunt great shots um, but we're really going to hang our hat on the defensive end I, I think our team has a great opportunity to be very good on the defensive end. We've got good foot speed. They've shown some grit and toughness that I wasn't sure in the beginning how tough we would be able to play. 
Um, and I thought this Sunday they showed me some things that we really can build from. So excited about our group. Uh, staff has really hit the ground running. It's nice because a lot of them know me, know the system. So that helps you be um, ahead of the game just from having people that know how you want scouts to operate, know how you want player development to go, know how you want your practices to run. I know what their strengths are. They know what my strengths are. And we can all kind of pivot off of each other. So um, like I said, I, I it's exciting to see everybody everybody here today. I, I'm hopeful that we have great attendance. I think our marketing folks have done a great job. We've already sold more season tickets and just looking to one day at a time grow the women's game and here at App State and be able to get people in the stands. I mean, we've told every single recruit that I have this little a picture of our men's sold out game last year and, and that's a vision for us. We want to follow the WNBA and follow the NCAA game and, and get a lot of people in our stands and make this the best place to play in the Sun Belt. Thanks coach. We'll open it up now for questions. Hey coach, Zach Smith, High Country Sports. Um, Last year, you uh, touched on Zeta Porter. Um, last year, we saw a lot of development from her, uh, especially on like the defensive side and more of a leadership style. What have you been seeing from her uh, in this whole preseason phase? You guys are going to like what you see from Zeta Porter. Um, we've been able, fortunately, as of right now, we've been able to move her off the ball, which has shown just some, uh, you know, a little different role for her to, to help her read the defense and be able to cut and move and change sides of the floor. She's a great athlete, and you combine that with, she's a really skilled basketball player, and so we've worked hard and really leaned into, she wants to be a coach, and she has good basketball IQ. Um, she's really good for our style of play, so how we want to play, she's a good passer, she can, um, you know, like I said, really get up and defend and rebound the ball as a guard and and I think you'll like what you see from her she she has shown to really score the ball for us we need her downhill attack because we've got a lot of shooters I mean we have lineups we can put four and five shooters on the floor and so we need some people to help create and play make um, on the interior I mean, each of the players we had in here before, um, they all mentioned the team chemistry, how well the team has been working together. What have you been seeing in terms of that on your side? Yeah, I think the same thing. I think that what, what I like about our team chemistry is the first thing we really tried to do as a program is build relationships with each other because uh, chemistry takes time. And, and unfortunately, we don't have time. We've got nine seniors. We have about six months with this group. And so I've really told them our relationship building's got to happen quick. Our buy-in, buy has got to happen quick and we don't want to skip steps but it just there's a sense of urgency in every piece of the program and um, luckily I can be myself they, they they look me in the eye they want to win they came to App State to win and we have so many new players with so many different experiences that they've just they're just been sincere buy-in from um, showing just what wins in college basketball you know we've still got some culture things that we've got to clean up that we saw in our scrimmage um, and I I, they will be fixed by Sunday. I mean, I, I feel like our team has taken every little small goals that I've given them and, and really leaned into them. But, um, you know, they're going to play for each other. And they've got some good bonds going on. But it's easy this time of year. So the adversity comes when uh, there's kids that still have their shooting shirt on or there's kids that play one minute or two minutes. And it's important that um, we continue to talk about it's about us and everybody on the bench. We call it the bench mob. You're going to see our bench wild and crazy and hopeful hopefully doing fun stuff over there and bringing a lot of juice and energy and and um, you know that's going to change who's over there because we've got a lot of different weapons that we can rotate into our starting lineup but you know we're not going to play 13 and 14 so that 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 um, buy-in is going to have to be really unselfish here when we start tipping and minutes start to be a thing and so that's why it's important now to have those bonds and start having those conversations of what it's going to look like before you're there. Bobby Phillips, Appalachian Weekly News and 90.5 WASU. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the newcomers that you've recruited as on top of the veterans. Maybe on both sides of that, where are some players that have really shined early on while y'all are preparing for the season? Well, obviously, Emily Carver, she was kind of banged up when I first got here and she missed several weeks, but she is an amazing person and kid. She 
um, is so selfless. I mean, she, we could have her, I mean, I could ask her to do anything and she would do it to the best of her ability, her work ethic, her buy-in, her ability. I mean, her basketball ability, she can shoot it, she can drive it, she's athletic. And what people don't really know is she can really pass the ball too. So that's been really um, awesome in our style of play. We talked about Zeta Porter already. Obviously, Jamani Ingram, a returner that you guys saw have some big games last year. Uh, kind of like Zeta, we need her power play. She's just a little bit different than anyone else on our roster. She's powerful. We're really going to lean into her ability to offensive rebound. Uh, she's tough. She's gritty. And she's really good at that. I also think between her and Zeta, they can be, and Emily, they can be three of our best defenders. You know, they've been in a great strength program here. And um, they're they're just, they move so well. And they've got great grit and toughness. Um, Elena, you saw her from Croatia. Uh, she's going to be a great interior player for for us, the nice thing about her is she's six one and she can really defend a post, but she also can stretch and step out. That's ultimately where we want to go with the program, where we have five players on the floor, um, but we still have post play, but they can also step out and shoot it. So we're trying to go that direction in our recruiting. Um, Rylan Moffitt has also done a good job. You know, we've really developed her three ball, and she's shooting the ball with confidence. She's shooting at about forty percent right now. So I think that's going to be excited as she blends in from playing the five to rotating, uh, facing the basket a little bit more. And, and um, you know, not that we won't ever play her at the five. We will because she's really comfortable there also. So we'll blend. And that's a nice thing about the way that we play and having our zone is we can play pretty much any lineups that we want. Emily Heggie is a scorer. Uh, she scored 982 points at her last uh, school. And that's not going to stop now that she's in the black and gold. Obviously, she's wanted to play in this program for a long time. Her dad played here. So she's someone that's going to score for us. Um, Mata Nira that came with us from Presbyterian. She's really shooting the ball at a high clip. She's got good range. She's been great for us to work on scouting report. We call players that can really shoot it and shoot it with range. We call them pink jerseys and we'll put a pink jersey on them. And so that's been good for us to be able to practice some of that. But those are the players that have really scored the ball. I mean, Asia Ennis is really holding it down at the point guard position right now. She's doing a great job. Um, she's a fifth year. We have so many fifth years. They're just older. Same with Zoe McCrary. She's a great defender. We're developing her offensive game. Um, I was really pleased with what I've seen with her in the last week. Appreciate it, Coach. Coach Sharp, I just want to kind of gauge your reaction. You have a lot of coaching experience, obviously, but the f November 6th, when you, when you guys opened the home schedule, I just want to kind of gauge your reaction of what, what it'll be like for you and what you hope it'll look like. I love that question. Um, I've been soaking it all in since April 5th, I think. I, there's still moments that, ah, I just can't believe it. You know, Aho Road that I live up is closed right now, and so I'm forced to take the parkway every single morning. And today when I was driving in and saw the sunrise, I just am like, oh my gosh, I'm the head coach here, that's amazing. Um, so I don't think I'll ever stop hopefully soaking all of that in. I, I'll be honest with you, I was a little nervous for the first scrimmage uh, and nerves are only excitement. And I know some of the players felt the same way that I did, Emily Heggie, I was like, who's nervous? And she raised her hand and we talked about, you know, nerves just means you're excited. It's good to feel like that. I'm sure I'll have that same feeling when, um, you know, there's, there's actually a W or an L after the game. But I think it's so important that me as the head coach I don't underreact or overreact at any moment in the season. I mean, the, we are not going to be on a straight line to success. There's going to be good moments. There's going to be moments that we take a step back, and it's important for me to just continue to focus on the growth. Where do we want to be? Where do we want to be by the next time that we tip? Um, you know, so it, it's only, what, 13 days till that first game, but that's so much time to get better as a team because once you start playing games, your stretches of three and four practices and really working on things, are they kind of end. And so it's important for us. I mean, we came out of our scrimmage. We thought we did some things really well, and, and but there's some things that we're going to work really hard to get cleaned up here in about 20 minutes when I get over to practice. And, and I think it's just important for us to focus on playing really good basketball in February and March because I think we have everything that we need to be a really good basketball team. We just got to keep our chemistry good. We've got to stay bought in and, and remain coachable and, and just remember why we came to app. And, and this team has a chance to leave a legacy and do things that have never been done here. And that's what they came here to do. And we're excited for that challenge. 
Matt President, Appalachian Sports Network. Coach, every player who was in here before you talked about chemistry and, and the bond that they've built already. How gratifying is that as someone who came in just a few months ago and you know was recruiting players from all different areas of the country internationally? When you reflect on that initial recruiting process, like what is the success that has allowed this chemistry to take form? Everything starts in recruiting. Everything starts in reference checking and figuring out who fits you because I really talk a lot about sharing the ball. I talk a lot about good to greats and we grade shots, A, B, C, you know, and we want to try to get a high percentage of A shots every single game. And so, I, you know, I'm not for everybody, but all that goes back to we recruit really selfless kids and you can ask them questions in recruiting, you know, what, how are you gonna handle if I ask you to take, take less shots so we can win? What's gonna be your response to that? So you can kind of dig in and, and learn about someone's personality in the recruiting process. And I think my staff did a really, really good job of that. And so when you have selfless kids that wanna win and they're all somewhat like-minded, not that we're cookie cutters, like you said, we've got people from all different areas and everywhere, but they want the same things and so I think that's what we did a good job of in recruiting is finding like-minded young women that they want to change App State they want to move the needle and we've had some success but there's never been a Sun Belt championship and they have the chance to really um, you know move the needle in, in the, our program getting closer to that. I'm sure there's been a, a ton on your plate over the course of this stretch from recruiting and roster building and all that you step into a new conference. What have you been able to glean about the Sun Belt that might be unique or different from where you've been before? Well, this will be, you know, one of the highest levels that I've coached at. I think it's a little bit similar to Conference USA. I think the biggest difference is the power and the athleticism of the Sun Belt. I think the tempo is a little bit quicker than Conference USA. You know, I spent, what, five or six years in Conference USA. It's more skilled, probably. Um, the Sun Belt, and every month or so, we go and we watch some games from the Sun Belt last year just to see what our team looks like, what do the top five teams look like in the Sun Belt. Um, it's very transition offense oriented, a lot of offensive rebounding. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to really work hard to offset some of that with our zone. And, you know, we're getting good in our zone. I'm excited to roll that out. Our kids are bought into it. They're enjoying kind of the matchup zone. And it's fun once you once you start getting good at that. But um, the Sun Belt, I think, will have one of the better years because I think the lower end is better than it has been in the past. And I think, um, you know, obviously JMU – they have a lot of returners and, and they're going to be really good. But I think everybody else has so much new. It'll be interesting to see after non-conference what everybody looks like. But the quality of the coaching in the Sun Belt is really good. Uh, the quality of the athlete and the player is, is obviously really good. I'm excited for the challenge um, to put scouts together and, and put our players in a position to win every game. Coach Bob Dillner, Appalachian Weekly News, App TV. Um, I've seen you and the team out there helping the community in a difficult time. Uh, and it's been wonderful what all the sports has done here at App State. But at the same time, how much has this been chemistry building for your team as well to be able to do this together? I think you're exactly right. I mean, we talk about adversity. Usually adversity can break you apart or bring you together. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's a really good point that, um, you know, we didn't have school for a long time and we were still together and we've already kind of overcome something kind of hard. Um, you know, we had people lose cars and just different things that happened within our program and, and you know, not being able to hear from some of your players for 24 hours is concerning and you can't go check on them and and you know Emily Carver didn't hear from her parents for almost 48 hours and I do think that that brings you closer together and then we thought we had it bad until we started getting out into the community and you meet people who have literally lost everything and you have the chance to put a smile on their face I mean the building that we're in right now it became a shelter for people who had no home and um, we built some relationships with some people that were in the shelter for a while and and could brighten their spirits and and we went and we helped and um, you know like I said we we did some different stuff uh, in the community and I just think I agree I think that that helps bring you closer together and make you realize that 
we've got a great opportunity. And our first practice that we were able to practice, we talked about it's more than basketball. I mean, we are playing for our community. We are playing for just the people who have lost so much. And, um, you know, we still get to do what we want to do and what we came here to do. And so uh, I love the Mountain Strong. I think that's such a fit for our program anyway. And we'll be really thankful to tip off, uh, I think, what, November 6th here at home and, and do it for our community. And lastly, uh, a lot of talk about style of play from your players to you and so forth. How do you describe the style of play that we're going to see out of App State this year? Yeah. So defensively, we, we're not going to be wild and crazy. We're going to be very keep you in front. We're going to really try to keep the ball out of the middle third, right? So think free throw lane up. We want to try to push the ball in other areas. Our man-to-man -man defense is going to be scrappy, keep you in front. Our zone has a few more built-in traps and, and whatnot, but really only if you go in certain areas of the defense. And so all of it is very similar in, in, in a standpoint of we don't want to gamble. That's something we're having to get uh, unwired from our players and create some new habits with them, but really keep in front and you only get one shot. I mean, we have worked really hard on defensive rebounding. We know what coming in the Sun Belt and luckily we've got a great set of practice guys that really challenge us from athleticism every single day and and I, I'm really excited defensively I mean I can't wait till we hold people low 50s and maybe we get our first 40 defensive night I'm excited about that offensively we're still somewhat trying to figure out our pace of play we're gonna work really hard uh, this week on our transition offense I think right now we either have transition offense or half court offense I think there's some early offense that we're missing so we're going to work on that between now and, and our scrimmage and then evaluate okay did we turn it over more did we take better shots kind of what did that look like and we'll continue to evaluate every single game because there's still some things I learned from players that they could do in the scrimmage that I didn't know they could do sometimes things start happening and kids start getting the ball in different areas like Jamani Ingram we've realized she's really good in the high post and so we're trying to tweak our offense to get her there more get Zeta Porter there more even Emily Carver like like I said, she's a really good passer. So bringing her off some on-ball action, putting her positions to play make a little bit more. But offensively, I want um, you know to create some extra possessions with offensive rebound, rebounding. We talk a lot about points per possession. We had two groups this last weekend that we had 1.5 points per possession. 0.84 won the Sun Belt last year. So um, that's something that we have pay attention to, which means you got to take care of the ball. You want to take good shots, uh, make the most out of each possession. So. Um, but yeah, I, I think we've got some depth that we can roll out there. And, and I think our kids can play really, really hard because there's someone on the bench that can sub in and bring that same caliber of play. Any further questions? Thanks, Coach Sharp. Thank you, everybody, for being here. All right, now we've got the women's basketball assistant coaches. We've got Brooklyn Taylor, Caleb Thomas, and Raven Wright. We will open it up for questions. David Roger, High Country Sports. Um, my understanding is a lot, a lot of your guys' role is in, is in recruiting. Talk about some of the challenges that you've had in recruiting for App State. Well, as a recruiting coordinator, I think it's been a great, uh, great opportunity. Uh, I don't really see a lot of challenges. I think it's a blessing of uh, all the stuff that we have, um, and I think with our our coaches and our players that we do have. Um, I don't really think I've seen challenges per se. I think it's been opportunities. Yeah, I think we're in obviously just a different world um, in college athletics in general. So I think the challenges are more generalized to just the transfer portal and just the, the windows that we have to work with now. But it's not necessarily App State, like she said. I think there's a lot here to sell. And I think Coach Sharp is a selling point, um, as well as just the school and the program and the hierarchy of success here, standard of success is an easy sell. The mountains aren't for everybody, but um, I think that we've done a pretty good job of selling um, what we do have to sell here. Uh, for me, I think uh, just to kind of piggyback off of those two answers, um, some of the things that we've been able to do is get athletes who care about each other. And so uh, in that vein, I think that's the I think that's the most important part of it, right? Just trying to get athletes and people first. I think we recruit the people first and then um, ensuring that we get the best athlete that follows that. So 
Hey guys, Zach Smith, High Country Sports. Um, throughout this whole process with with Coach Sharp getting to work with the team, uh, getting ready for, for the upcoming season, what have you been seeing from the returning players in terms of their buying into her new system? Um, I mean, to, I've been saying from the beginning, I feel like they're the most impressive group. Um, you know, they didn't choose us the way that the other ones chose us and Coach Sharp. And so um, they were, to me, the biggest catalyst for as quickly as the buy-in happened. Um, there wasn't a transition period. Um, I don't feel like, I feel like they were really excited um, for Coach Sharp's vision and what she had for the future of this program. And they bought in from the jump. And I think that's um, a big responsibility of, of why we've reached the point we have as quickly as we have is because of the returners buy-in. I think, um, you know, we had our very first workout when uh, we were short-staffed. And uh, the most rewarding thing that I always go back to is uh, one of the returners mentioned that it felt like we were in the championship program. And so I think that that mindset that Coach Sharp has, it runs through us. And then, you know, we try to bleed it over into the players and they buy in from the expectation they have of Coach Sharp. And so we all just try to stay high energy, stay high level and uh, keep the conversations high because, you know, they, they, they've they had different experiences. Everybody's had different experiences, whether it's returners uh, or players that we recruited. And um, I think those experiences all come together for all of the players uh, and they want to they wanna finish it out the right way, especially those who have returned, so. Yeah, I would just say, um, since we got here, obviously we had to sign 10 new players, um, and they bought in not only on the court, but in the culture, recruiting. Uh, we asked them to do a lot of Zooms, a lot of meetings with recruits, and they were just always on. And like, had they not bought into that process, like they wouldn't have you know, the 10 new teammates that they got. So, you know, as a staff, I think we're really, really thankful that they helped get really good quality teammates in. And, you know, it shows not only on the court, but off the court as well. Um, of the... 10 new recruits, uh, who, who were some of the names that have been kind of standing out more? I feel like we debate this a lot as a staff. Um, I think we're still trying to figure it out. Uh, we, you know, we had a scrimmage the other day. We just rotate, rotate bodies in because we're still trying to learn our team. We're trying to let them learn each other. Um, so I, I feel like every day it changes, honestly. And that's going to be really, I'm sure Coach Sharp talked about it, but like we're going to be hard to guard because we have so many different lineups we can play, so many big, small, all kinds of different combinations. So I think um, you know, we're going to figure it out, and it's going to be really hard for other people to figure out how to guard us as well. Austin Bartolome Hill, App TV. Um, just talk us through, you know, the roster construction of, you know, JUCOs, grad transfers, transfer portal, freshmen, internationals. Um, what, what are, you, what are you guys as a staff looking for, and how did this team come to be? I think we do, we all coach different position groups, and so when we coach the groups and we're looking for players that fit the system, that's what we look for first: players that fit the, fit the system. Um, and then what follows that is players that can compete in the Sun Belt. You know, we we look at Sun Belt as a pretty competitive level, and so the. The culmination of the players we have are players that work well together on the court. We picked complementary players, so we got some some JUCO players who've been scoring dominant. You know, we have some uh, D2 player who scored over 2,000 points in high school and averaged, you know, uh, quite a bit at her school. Um, and then all of the other players we cho we choose to complement based off of the system. You know what I'm saying? And uh, everything is built off of what Coach Sharp's vision is. And so when we recruit those players. Um, we all coach our position groups based off of what her vision is and how we can get the best out of them. Again, you know, we have non-seniors, so a lot of them have one chance to, to finish it out the right way. And uh, in that process, we try to get the most out of them through what Coach Sharp's vision is. So, Hey, guys. Jacob Plecker with App State Athletics. I asked this to Coach Sharp, but I just kind of want to get your guys' reaction to November 6th when you guys open the home schedule. What are, you, what are the three of you – most looking forward to either seeing in the crowd or like what are you most looking forward to about opening up the home schedule at a new job 
I think for me, it's the atmosphere, right? I think it's a really, really exciting time for women's basketball. As we know last year, like it's, it gives me chills thinking about what this game, like just, you know, the 10 years that I've been in this job, like how much it's grown. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the community can do and come out and support us and see the new brand of basketball here in Holmes. Um, so, and I, th I think too, obviously, like I just said, we're trying to figure out our team and just seeing the product that we're working to put on the floor. Like I'm really excited to see that being showcased in front of the community. Yeah, it's, it's fun to do our job every day. Um, and a big part of that is because of this group of kids that we have. Um, they're so bought into the process. It's, it, it really is, it doesn't feel like work. And I'm just excited to see kind of the culmination of everything come together. Um, obviously we'll play before that, but to do it in front of the people that have been so great. I mean, it's, it's always interesting to be a new staff. You know, we're brand new, we don't know anyone. And this community has really embraced all of us and all of our kids. And so I think to have, um, you know, the hard work that they've put in from the day they stepped on campus, um, you know, come together and in front of the people that have also really poured in and taken time to come and get to know this group of kids is gonna be something really special. I'm originally from Louisiana, and so, you know, hurricanes have been a, a huge thing there. Um, and then just to think about how, you know, the Saints had the historic run after the hurricane, um, I think sports always brings people together, you know what I'm saying? And I think just to have that form of entertainment, that form of competition, everybody loves those two things. And so we talk about the rare air, you know, we want to be a part of that. We want to start that uh, as a trend here and just, um, make a culture of something new, you know, uh, a rare standard of a uh, new expectation, a higher level, and, and all of that. So I think that's my um, my goals for the first home game is just to see the people come together and support something new and support something that we, we are trying to build here. So. Any further questions? All right. Thanks, coaches. Thank you. Thank you.